The Constitution of Angola, 2010, Provisions on Treaty Article 11. Peace and National Security 1. The Republic of Angola shall be a nation dedicated to peace and progress, and it shall be the duty of the state and the right and responsibility of all to guarantee peace and national security, respecting the Constitution and the law. In addition to international conventions. 2. Peace shall be based on the supremacy of the rule of law and legislation, with a view to ensuring the necessary conditions required for the stability and development of the country. 3. National security shall be based on the supremacy of the rule of law and legislation, development of the national security system and the strengthening of national will and shall guarantee to safeguard the state and ensure stability and development in the face of any threats or risks. Article 13. International Law. 1. General or common international law received under the terms of this Constitution shall form an integral part of the Angolan legal system. 2. Duly approved or ratified international treaties and agreements shall come into force in the Angolan legal system after they have been officially published and have entered into force in the international legal system, for as long as they are internationally binding upon the Angolan state. Article 25. Foreigners and Stateless Persons. 1. Foreigners and stateless persons shall enjoy fundamental rights, freedoms, and guarantees, and the protection of the state. 2. The following are forbidden to foreigners and stateless persons. Holding office in bodies that exercise sovereign power. Electoral rights, under the terms of the law. Founding or serving in political parties. Entitlements to participation in politics, as stipulated by law. Access to a diplomatic career. Entry into the armed forces, the national police force and the intelligence and security organizations. Direct state administrative functions, under the terms of the law. Any other rights and duties reserved exclusively for Angolan citizens under the constitution and the law. 3. Rights not conferred on foreigners may be granted to citizens of regional or cultural communities to which Angola may belong or be associated with. Through international conventions and on the basis of reciprocity, with the exception of the right to vote and stand for election to bodies that exercise sovereign power. Article 27. The principles set out in this chapter shall apply to the rights, freedoms, and guarantees, and to fundamental rights of a similar nature that are established in the Constitution or are enshrined in law or international conventions. Article 108. Head of State and Executive Power. 1. The President of the Republic shall be the Head of State, the Executive Power and the Commander-in-Chief of the Angolan Armed Forces. 2. The President of the Republic shall exercise executive power, assisted by a Vice President. Ministers of State and Ministers. 3. The Ministers of State and Ministers shall be assisted by Secretaries of State or Vice Ministers, where they exist. 4. The President of the Republic shall promote and ensure national unity and the independence and territorial integrity of the country and shall represent the nation within the country and internationally. 5. The President of the Republic shall respect and defend the Constitution. Ensure compliance with laws, agreements, and international treaties and promote and guarantee the regular functioning of organs of the state. Article 121. Responsibilities regarding international relations. In the sphere of international relations, the President of the Republic shall be responsible for. 1. Defining and directing the execution of state foreign policy, 2. Representing the state, 3. Signing and ratifying international treaties, conventions, agreements and other instruments, as appropriate and after they have been passed, 4. Appointing and discharging ambassadors from office and appointing extraordinary envoys, 5. Accrediting foreign diplomatic representatives. Article 134. Council of Ministers. 1. 
The Council of Ministers shall be an auxiliary body serving the President of the Republic in the formulation and execution of general policies for the nation and the public administration. 2. The President of the Republic shall preside over the Council of Ministers, which shall comprise the Vice President, Ministers of State and Ministers. 3. Secretaries of State and Vice Ministers may be invited to take part in meetings of the Council of Ministers. 4. The Council of Ministers shall be responsible for pronouncing on government policies and their execution. Legislative proposals to be submitted to the National Assembly for approval. Presidential legislation. National planning instruments. Presidential regulations required for the correct execution of laws. International agreements which require the approval of the President of the Republic. The adoption of general measures required to execute the governance program of the President of the Republic. Any other matters that may be submitted for the consideration of the President of the Republic. 5. The rules of procedure for the Council of Ministers shall be approved by Presidential Decree. Article 161. Political and Legislative Competencies Within the political and legislative sphere, the National Assembly shall be responsible for 1. Approving amendments to the Constitution, under the terms of this Constitution, 2. Approving laws on all matters, except those reserved by the Constitution for the President of the Republic, 3. Granting the President of the Republic authorization to legislate and considering authorized presidential legislative decrees for the purposes of determining whether they should be amended or cease to remain in force, under the terms of the law, 4. Considering provisional presidential legislative decrees, for the purposes of determining whether they should be converted into laws. 5. Approving the state budget, 6. Setting and altering the political and administrative divisions of the country, under the terms of the Constitution and the law, 7. Granting amnesties and general pardons, 8. Pronouncing on the possibility of President of the Republic declaring a state of siege or emergency, 9. Pronouncing on the possibility of President of the Republic declaring a state of war or making peace, 10. Proposing to the President of the Republic that referendums should be held on relevant matters of national interest. 11. Approving for ratification and signing treaties, conventions, agreements and other international instruments involving matters within its absolute legislative responsibility, in addition to treaties to which Angola is a party involving international organizations. The rectification of borders, friendship, cooperation, defense, and military affairs. 12. Approving withdrawal from treaties, conventions, agreements, and other international instruments. 13. Promoting the process for bringing proceedings against and removing from office. The President of the Republic, under the terms prescribed in Articles 127 and 129 of this Constitution. 14. Any other functions that may be conferred on it by the Constitution and the law. Article 207. The Angolan Armed Forces. 1. The Angolan Armed Forces shall be the permanent, regular, and nonpartisan national military institution entrusted with the military defense of the country. Organized on a hierarchical basis and owing discipline and obedience to the appropriate sovereign bodies under the supreme authority of the President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief, under the terms of the Constitution and the law. And any international conventions to which Angola may be a party. 2. The Angolan Armed Forces shall be composed exclusively of Angolan citizens and shall possess a single organizational structure for the whole of national territory. 3. The law shall regulate the organization, functioning, discipline, training and employment of the Angolan armed forces in peacetime and in times of crisis and conflict. Article 209. Guarantee of Order. 1. The objective of the guarantee of order is to defend public peace and security, ensure and protect institutions citizens and their respective property and fundamental rights and freedoms against violent or organized crime and other types of threats or risks, 
with strict respect for the Constitution, the laws, and any international conventions to which Angola may be a party. 2. The organization and functioning of the bodies which ensure public order shall be established by law. Article 210. National Police Force. 1. The National Police Force shall be the national, permanent, regular and nonpartisan police institution, organized on a hierarchical basis and in terms of the discipline required for the protection and safety of the country by the police force. With strict respect for the Constitution, the laws and any international conventions to which Angola may be a party. 2. The National Police Force shall be composed exclusively of Angolan citizens and shall possess a single organizational structure for the whole of national territory. 3. The law shall regulate the organization and functioning of the National Police Force. Article 211. Preserving the Security of the State. 1. The objective of preserving the security of the estate shall be to safeguard the democratic state based on the rule of law against violent or organized crime and other types of threats or risks, with respect for the Constitution, the laws and any international conventions to which Angola may be a party. 2. The preservation of state security shall include the institutional elements of the state intelligence and security bodies. 3. The organization and functioning of the preservation of state security shall be established by law. Article 227. Objective of Review. All acts which constitute violations of constitutional principles and norms shall be subject to a review of their constitutionality, specifically. 1. Legislation, 2. International treaties, conventions, and agreements, 3. Revisions of the Constitution, 4. Referenda. Article 228. Prior Review of Constitutionality. 1. The President of the Republic may ask the Constitutional Court to conduct a prior review of the constitutionality of any rule contained in legislation that has been submitted for enactment. Any international treaty submitted to him for ratification or any international agreement sent to him for signature. 2. One-tenth of the members of the National Assembly in full exercise of their office may also request a prior review of the constitutionality of any rule contained in legislation that has been submitted for enactment. 3. A prior review of constitutionality must be requested within 20 days of reception of the legislation in question. 4. The Constitutional Court must pronounce within 48 days which may be reduced due to urgency if so requested by the President of the Republic or one-tenth of the members of the Assembly in full exercise of their office. Article 229. Effect of Prior Review. 1. Legislation for which a prior review of constitutionality has been requested from the Constitutional Court may not be enacted, signed or ratified before the Constitutional Court has delivered its ruling. 2. If the Constitutional Court declares that any rule contained in a piece of legislation, treaty, convention, or international agreement is unconstitutional, it must be vetoed by the President of the Republic and returned to the body which had approved it. 3. In cases provided for under the previous point, the legislation, treaty, convention, or international agreement may not be enacted, ratified or signed, as appropriate, unless the body that passed it expunges the rule that has been deemed unconstitutional. 4. If the legislation, treaty, convention or international agreement is reformulated, the President of the Republic or the members who had contested its constitutionality may request a prior review of the constitutionality of any of its rules.